This is Dina Does. I'm Dina, and I know a little bit about a lot, but I want to know more. So join me on this path to self-discovery. Today on Dina Does, we're talking astrology. Today we are covering one of my favorite, actually probably my favorite topic in the world, astrology, and who better to have on, but not only my dear friend, but... I, every time I mention your name, Ophi, um, people's l- eyes just light up because you are, you and your sister Tali are among the best, in my opinion, the best astrologers in the world. Thank so thank you. you for being here today, Ophi. Thank, um, thank you. For those of you who know me, they know Ophi because I talk about you a lot. I reference you a lot. And I say this every time we speak publicly, I probably should say it more privately, but I I do let you know that (laughs) it wasn't until I met you that I really started to harness my witchy powers and use them. Um, I kind of like elevated up because you taught me everything I was feeling intuitively, or even since I was a little girl, like making rock soup in the backyard. Like (laughs) I did that too. (laughs) Of course you did. Um, Yeah. But you like taught me what it, all was and like really had to harness it into manifesting and using the moon cycles and everything. So I owe a lot of like my knowledge and um, my powers that I've stepped into really to our relationship. So again, I want to thank you so much for that. Thank you. Every publicly acceptable piece of clothing in my wardrobe is there because of our friendship too. (laughs) (laughs) We've transformed each other. (laughs) Oh, but I love you so much. So I wanted you to be our first guest because um, everybody loves astrology. And I think, you know, a lot of this podcast, we're going to have a lot of fun with it. We're going to talk about current events. Um, I also want to introduce two other people on here first, in case you hear other voices. So we have Maya. Maya is my um, right hand girl. She's here with me in California. She's going to pop in once, once in a while. Maya is a Gemini. And um, I, my relationship with Gemini's is interesting. We'll get into that. But when I heard yeah. she was a Gemini at first, I got a little nervous. Oh, but no. then when I... <laughs> <laughs> it's a common reaction, but there are some great ones. Yes, yes. But then when I sat with her, I really, I can't wait to see her whole chart because I was like, we're good. We're good. Yeah. And, I think and- my moon and rising are my saving grace. <laughs> Ooh, well, what are they? Both Libra. Mm-hmm. You're good. We're good. And then we have Derek. Derek is our, um, he's the voice. I, I was going to say reason, but we don't say that about men. <laughs> um, he, he's going to tap into the masculine of all of this once in a while. Everything we're talking about here on Dina does. Um, and he is a Leo. Derek. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. Hey, how you doing? I'm a Leo and uh, I have no clue what my rising moons are or anything you guys are just saying we'll, so, we'll get to the bottom of that yeah, we'll I mean, get to that don't you worry <laughs> I, i'm excited to uh to uh, learn about this along the way and probably ask questions that are that are very simple for you but you know for me i i have no clue what's what all this is about so i'm very interested and i'm excited to uh to be on here with you dina and let's uh let's talk about my moons and stars and stuff let's do that <laughs> i love talking to men about astrology because you know uh, a lot of them come from a very practical place, but then that, that means you get great questions. And yeah, that's exactly, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I just general inquiry, right? You're not supposed to just believe stuff because I tell you to, I mean, you would, if you <laughs> really? were smart. just kidding, <laughs> maybe if you're a Pisces, right? Yeah. No, yes. I mean, in all fairness, Dina, your witchy powers were just wait, brewing in their own cosmic cauldron waiting to be unleashed. So I'm glad I could be the spoon that stirred them. Wow. That whole sentence was like amazing. Cosmic cauldron <laughs> and stirring the spoon of, of, of amazement or whatever you said. Wow. That's Do you I'm, already, Do you I'm in. Oh, right. I love it. I am a writer. What can I say? <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes. You're a writer of many amazing books, which we'll definitely get into. Um, but, you know, astrology has so many layers and that's why I'm like, I'm lucky enough to have you on speed dial. Um, but you know, thank God you offer courses as well, because there are so many different layers to astrology and you can go as shallow or deep as you want. Um, yeah. I started off just reading my horoscope every day and just, you know, oh, this will be fun. Or the, sometimes I'd read it the 
end of the day and see if it came true or whatever. But now I know that astrology is a tool for not only relationships, um, it's career, it could be used as a tool for everything in life. And this podcast in general, um, what I was started saying before is, is going to have an undertone of healing yourself, how we the different modalities that I've learned to heal um, from some of the things that I went through in my life. And the first step to healing is to know yourself and know everything about yourself and be very self aware, in my opinion. Um, And astrology is a huge part of that, because it makes things make sense. Um, You understand your reaction to other people a little bit better. um, And you get to be a little bit more self aware and have those tools. So that's what I want to talk about first is the number one question when anyone talks to me about astrology is sun, moon and rising. Yeah. What did they all represent? So, right, right. Go for it. So, but when I found astrology, I didn't even know that your zodiac sign was the sun sign, but to give a little quick understanding of astrology and how it works, um, imagine that you're lying on your back in a grassy field, looking up at the stars and you take your iPhone and take a screenshot of the sky at that moment. That is what your birth chart is. It's a freeze frame of the sky overhead and the planets in relationship to where you are on earth at that moment. So the moment you're born would be your location, wherever you were born and just snapshot of the sky. So we usually, when we read our horoscope, we're just looking at our sun sign or zodiac sign, but all the planets were arranged in a unique pattern that only someone born at the same exact time and location and date as you will have year down to the second, even my twin sister and I, who are four minutes apart, don't have the exact same chart. So it's, yeah. So it's a whole lot of information yet. It's so useful. You can use it. Like Dina said, to understand your whole personality or what's happening. You know what I'm talking to you about healing with astrology. Now in a few hours, I'm doing a podcast about Russia and China and Bitcoin and all of those things and be, and, mapping the future of that with astrology. So you can go that far into it. Obviously, astrology is best eaten one bite at a time. So once you kind of like read your daily horoscope enough and want to learn more about what makes you tick, finding your moon sign and your rising sign are a great next step. So what that is, is the moon is like the inner you and the rising is the outer you. The rising is based on your time of birth. It's how you dawn on people where the sun was rising over the horizon at your time of birth. So Dina, you are Pisces sun, but a Leo, wait, no, Sag rising. Sag, Sag, say that again. Sag rising Why and I moon. That? Your Leo That's okay. Note. Um, yes. So. Sag rising and moon. So does yeah. that make me half Sagittarius, half Pisces? It makes you kind of more of a Sag than me. Um, wow. Together now, we're a complete Sag. Yeah. Now Sag Sagittarius, right? I'm just getting that, Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> dro- we dropped the syllables. Astro lingo. Astro lingo. Get with it, Derek. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. Exactly. Okay, you know, you're Sag. a Leo, two syllables. No, no burden on anyone there. Mm-hmm. But uh, yes, the, so Dina comes across like a Sagittarius with her Sagittarius rising, which is adventurous and likes to travel and really into big ideas, exploring philosophies, metaphysical ideas, loves to read books. Sagittarius is curious and hungry for knowledge. And then her moon sign, which is her inner self, is also Sagittarius. That's a coincidence. Uh, The moon stays in one zodiac sign every two and a half days. So you were born at an hour of Sagittarius on one of those two days of the month. So, um, so on the inside, you're also very freedom loving and curious, and you respond to people who have big ideas. You love entrepreneurial people and, you know, you're, you don't take no for an answer. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I, it's funny. Cause um, I say I'm such a Pisces, you know, cause I'm so watery you and are. sensitive and stuff, but I do have that part of me. Like once in a while, I'm like, what's, where's this coming from? But I guess yeah. that's where all the planets and everything else um, kind of come into play. My nose is yeah. you. Um, <laughs> so it's just so fascinating. But one of the things that a lot of people ignore that I always say is one of the most important things is your North node and your South node. Yeah. Um, yeah, because 
from what I understand, from what the many retreats we've been on and classes I took from you, um, your North Node is like where where you're going in this lifetime, what you're here to do and learn. And your mm-hmm. South Node is where you're coming from. And interestingly enough, my North Node is Aquarius, which my daughter is an Aquarius. And my South Node is Leo. And both my parents are Leo. So it's past and future right there before my eyes and a constant reminder. Yeah. Um, So it's pretty cool to have that, but it's so true because I am definitely someone who always stayed on my own and was kind of worried about what was going on in this little bubble. And I'm learning so much in this lifetime, how working in a group is really so important and like opening up to like sharing and using computers for good and social media. (laughs) Right. I mean, like my calling. (laughs) It was so perfect. So, you know, we all have, well, I just want to say like, as you learn your chart, it's like learning the instruction manual that they say that people don't come with, but we do. So Derek, you're probably getting a little curious about yours, right? Yeah. I'm wondering like, what's my moon rising? How do we Right, right. Well, you know, know? (laughs) your moon sign and your (laughs) astro (laughs) style.com. Yeah, well, I can do your, we can do your chart. Um, If you, if you drop in the chat for us while we're chatting uh, your time, date and place of birth, I can pop it into my phone and tell you so yeah well the north and south node like Dino was saying is something that I love I learned a bit later into my astro journey because I've been learning about this for like 30 years but um it's so fascinating the idea that you have a past life and I was I'm you know naturally skeptical I did not mean to be an astrologer I almost went to engineering school I'm very technical but astrology can be um I found it to be uh I was like, well, let me see if this works. And I tried it out on a lot of people and it did. So I've come to believe in past lives just from all the evidence I've seen. So you have what's Hmm. called the South node in the chart, which shows what you brought in from prior lifetimes or are naturally good at. And that changes signs every 18 and a half months. So this group of people, a group of souls incarnates to learn a common set of lessons. And then you have your north node, like Dina said, which is in the opposite sign. So you're going from one point to another, and that's the whole theme of your lifetime. So you know, Dina has an Aquarius north node, which rules technology. And of course, her laptop almost died as we were doing this. You know, like <laughs> technology will always be the thing that you have to kind of work with. So Derek, what year were you born, if you don't mind saying? I was born in 81. Okay, you have the opposite nodes of Dina, probably. It could be Capricorn. We'll check. But but yeah. I and I also I, I don't know the exact time, but I'm pretty sure I was born in the morning. Okay. Uh, I'd have to check on that. But yeah. Moves. All right. Well, you're gonna have to get your birth certificate because the exact minute actually make like Ophi said, her and her twin have different charts because four minutes apart. Um and I know a lot of people freak out who don't have like their birth time. But there, you could still learn a lot about yourself through your natal chart without that. But it's if you have the exact minute, mm-hmm. it's precise. Yeah, so, I think yeah. I just have to ask That's your my homework. mom or yeah. get the yeah. you know, somehow figure that out. And yeah, That's I'm sure it's homework. pretty easy on my birth certificate. But yeah, yeah but so, for okay. anyone who wants to do this, I mean, Ophi, you make it pretty simple on your site that you can yeah. just go in and type up this information. Your natal chart will come out. And that's what I love about um, you're like a such a good teacher of astrology, you know, and besides the courses that you and your sister offer, um, you do retreats. I've been on two of them. You know, they're so fun. Oh yeah. Um, so I love that, you know, you teach it so well and practical and you're always using like analogies and metaphors. And that's the way I like to learn. Um, I'm more of like a visual. Yeah. So I appreciate the way you teach. Uh, And now that I'm learning more about my brain through Dr. Amen, I understand why I can't retain a lot of the knowledge. Well, that's, it's funny you say that because, you know, we were, we were going to mention a course that I've been creating. So my, you know, my rising sign is Capricorn, which rules business. And my moon sign is Scorpio, which is all about tinkering around under the hood and psychology. So one of my beliefs with astrology and what I love about it is that, you know, we hear stuff about neurotypical neuro eight. That's been kind of a common term now, but for, for many years, I don't think anyone is, you know, according to astrology, there is no typical, we all are designed perfectly yet uniquely, but we're taught to sort of, um, 
follow a one size fits all cookie cutter model, whether it's for relationships, work, lifestyle, learning, and people are denied the joy of learning or traveling or family or love because they're trying to do it by this. This is the way versus this is my way. So that's my Sagittarius son. I'm a real champion (laughs) of uh, doing what works for you. So one of the, one of the things we created recently, um, is uh, a membership program called Astropreneurs. So many people are leaving their jobs now with the pandemic and wanting to work remotely and find what they're meant to do, uh, or they're thinking about leaving their jobs or redesigning how they work, but they don't know exactly what what will, they know what's making them unhappy, which is swimming upstream and denying their own soul's calling, but they may not know what that calling is. So we've created this ongoing program to help people explore and discover that. And it's all about making you right, making you feel like you are perfection. So we've created this um, this system we call I am, it stands for influencer authority and maven. And we take 13 parts of your chart. You just have to put your time, date and place into the little calculator if you're curious, you can do it at astrostyle.com slash I am. And then you find out which one of those you are. And we teach people every month, like um, for this upcoming month, we're going to teach you how to create, how to design the perfect workspace and flow for your I am. Like some people need people around them. Some people need, uh, you know, their desk and their office. Other people need to like float around. So we're going to help people create like the perfect career, environment, team, et cetera, according to their I am archetype. And it's just been so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's Um, cool. It is cool. And people like are having all these breakthroughs and getting into action in their business because like I was beating myself up for having all these projects and wearing all these hats. And I found out that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And you gave me a, a tool to do that efficiently. So I don't have to go, oh, if I become a tarot reader, then I can I have to stop being a computer programmer. No, you be both of those things. Here's how. So that's that's how astrology becomes magic, you know? So, For sure. So where can we find that? It's obviously uh, on your site, but I think yeah, astro uh, astrostyle.com slash membership. It's our only member program. We decided just to design it around helping people translate their astrology into their purpose and path. Whether you do it for your career or your passion, side hustle, someday career, just it feels great to support people putting it into practice. So well, again, it's another tool to learn more about yourself and yeah. why you thrive in certain things. And again, that's all part of healing is self-awareness and why you are the way you are and get into the, the belly of the beast of it all while you do the things yeah. you do. Um, yeah. So astrology is a crazy, amazing tool to getting so to know it. yourself and the others and your, you know, I, there's people that I'll give certain passes to for certain behaviors. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, that's just his, <laughs> I'll use Dave. Cause he's a Scorpio. That's just a <laughs> he is coming a super up. Scorpio. I mean, it's not acceptable, but I'll be like, okay, when he comes down, we'll talk about that stinger and maybe how he can control that a little bit. And right. I get too emotional too quick. And like, you know, I have to like be aware of that. And he has to say, okay, that's just her Pisces sensitivity. Let me give her a break with that. And we'll come back to it when she's over that. So again, it's a tool, Mm -hmm. a really beautiful tool for relationships. And one of my favorite books that you wrote, and I mention this book all the time, because it's so important for parents out there and children out there, um, is your mom's astrology book because you learn so much. Is, that's the title, right? Because like, yeah, I know mom's it's, astrolo- I know it's like mom's astrology. astrology to everything. This is mom's yes. astrology. Yes, that's right. And, you know, as one of 11 children, um, and you reference my mom in this book. Um, oh, that's right. The craft. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But you. you need to raise all your children based on their astrology sign. <laughs> That's the tool yeah. book that I, we say, like, it, you know, these kids don't come with a handbook. Well, they kind of do, like you said, right. because you can't discipline a Pisces the same way you would discipline an Aries, you know? Exactly. Um, we all need, and I learned so much about mothering from this book, like Lexi's an Aquarius and I can't be the way my parents were with me, with her. That's just going to backfire. You know, she's, <laughs> she doesn't want to listen gonna to do what she's going to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So understanding that alone helps me as a mother, understanding 
this alone helps me as a daughter, you know, and how my mom as a Leo raised her children. And now she said, after like being a part of this book and explaining it all, she was like, I get it. Each one of you, 11 of you needed to be raised differently because one is more sensitive. One can take tough love. The other one needs, you know, structure. Um, and it's a really cool handbook. So Thank I think you. every mother should have it. Um, and the other book, which I thought was, should be called Manstrology, but what is it? Me too. I wanted it to be called Manstrology, but Man. love Zodiac. Oh, we need to get that. you a copy, Derek, although you may feel a little too seen by it. As <laughs> well, I'll, I'm, 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 first off, I was amazed you're one of 11. That's, that's I know. a lot in itself, but yeah, I don't, uh, hearing you talk about this, you know, and you were talking about the North and South thing earlier. I, I mean, I'm a Leo and then like, but like, that's all I do. Like I'm a performer and I entertain. And so I think that's, I don't know. Could it, could, could it be like both? Your North note is Leo. I need to, what day were you born? Oh, the day. Yeah. I, yeah. I gotta find, I gotta find out all that. I know it was the morning. I gotta find out the day and I live by the beach. No, no I, I don't mean day of the week. I mean the date, your birthday. Oh, I know. Do you not know your birthday, Derek? Oh, August 22nd, August 22nd. So that's sad. right. He doesn't know what he's <laughs> no, a rescue dog. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> no, <laughs> August 22nd. I thought you meant what day right, like, of the week. Already. No, yeah. I, uh, I totally understand because you. All right, well, we, we'll be prepared for the next astrology um, podcast yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to talk totally. about you a little bit more. Of course, the Leo wants to know, you know, Tell me more and more and more. But we all, do. astrology is so fascinating because everyone loves to learn about themselves in this way. You know, like you're, everyone's hungry for it. Ophi, everyone yeah. is hungry for astrology. Like you guys pick the right thank business you. I thank God. <laughs> well, here are you guys ready to have your minds blown? You have the opposite North and South nodes of each other because you're born oh. nine and a half years apart. So here, we need, huh. there's New York City traffic. So, so Dina and I have, we're, we're opposite is what you're saying. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, and that is really no accident. Okay. So the, so you have a Leo North node, which so, and an Aquarius South node. So in your past lifetimes, you were always a groups person, very technical, but you blend it in. And in this lifetime, you're learning Leo energy and you're even really learning it being born a Leo, uh, which is about performance and the spotlight and being seen. So here you are surrounded by all this technology, you know, podcasting, but but sharing your voice through that. So you must be very comfortable with tech. Very um, comfortable with tech. Yeah. yeah. And, and so performing. You, exactly. So you've mastered what Dina's here to learn and she's mastered what you're here to learn. So she's a, you know, Leo South node past lifetimes in, you know, a Royal family. Well, she was in a kind of a Royal family with 11 brothers and sisters. Wow. Um, very protected and sheltered. A lot of Leo South nodes are, and, you know, fame and celebrity came to her easily, but she felt it wasn't enough for her and her Aquarius North node, which is about, well, Aquarius rules television. So you did get to express things there, but it also rules humanitarian causes and making a difference and futuristic progressive ideas. So you used your celebrity of your past life, your comfort zone to share big, world changing ideas. So together you guys are going to, I mean, this podcast is going to blow shit up. So. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm plan. down for that. That's the plan. That's the plan. Exactly. And so we can learn cool? a lot from each other too, you know, yeah. um, being the mirror for what we need more of. I need more of, I actually, even though I'm Leo, I come from that. I'm still a little uncomfortable being in the spotlight. Like it's not something mm -hmm. I I'm fine with it, but I don't crave it. That's why I was able to quit housewife so easily. Cause it's not something right. that like drives me, but I do feel I have a big message to get out there through um, the people that I'm so lucky to have in my life who are experts in all these fields. Um, and I have to be more comfortable with putting myself out there and not worrying about the minutia of it all, which is, right. you know, kind of Derek, what you do, you just put yourself out there and you're on stage and you're loving it. And, you know, I, I need exactly. more of that. So I'm learning yeah. from you and, and it's, it's fast. See, this is what I mean. This is I know. what I mean. When you find this out, it's so, and actually, you know, how I met Dina was through Sonia Morgan, who has uh, the opposite North and so South node of me, who I did a reading for first. Mm -hmm. I have a cancer South node, which is a cancer North node. So um, 
yeah, isn't that funny? So that's, uh, that's funny. really cool. I mean, it's very interesting. Cause like I said, I don't, I'm not familiar with all this, but like what you're saying, you know, does make sense. And I, I'm not afraid to put myself out there. I've done it all my life, probably stems from when I was a kid, you know, I, 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 I looked a lot different, well, a lot different. I had a very large birthmark on the right side of my nose covered the entire side of my nose. And I was always, I was always that kid that, you know, you know, like the fat kid in school is always being the comedian, the funny guy. So everyone likes him. So they don't make mm. fun of him. So that was kind of me, you know, cause I just looked different than everybody else. And then, you know, before high school, I, you know, I had surgery and there's skin from my waist is now on my face. Um, mm -hmm. wow. and you know, you, probably would never notice unless they told you the story. Derek, but I want to do your, um, I dabble in past life. It's not something I talk yeah. about publicly. Um, no, I, she is really good. She's given me the only past like regression that I've ever, that has ever worked. And I remember to this day. So she's more <laughs> than good at it. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I would love to do your past life to see what that birthmark is all about. I know. I'm I would, looking. I would, I would love to know. I mean, yeah. but I, I still, I'm still like, so I was always out there in front of people. So I never had a problem doing that. And I didn't really get the acting bug till college. And then I started doing all this stuff. And of course. since 2009, I guess 10, I've been able to be strictly an entertainer. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty fascinating and it's interesting. And I don't know if we can get into it here, but no, it's you know, perfect. I'm, you know, I can't wait to tell you how it's all lining up, but keep going. But also, <laughs> but also I, I have a question and might, this might be too deep for, but like how nah. God and everything comes into all this. I like, love it. That, you know, I, well, I'm kind of interested in that too, you know? Heck yeah. Let's tackle it all. No question too deep. And Leo's, um, my mother's a Leo and, and a rabbi. So she has, oh. she's religious, but also spiritual. So, um, so I want to say about your birthmark. Interestingly, I had one here all the way on my neck that I had the same surgery as you when I was nine. Which oh, I wow. Think I, I think I was beheaded as a witch in a past lifetime or something. Of course, of course. <laughs> but, um, you think, you think, of you think I know, just maybe. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but for you to have that on your face. So Leo, again, is like the public. So, you know, if you didn't have that, you might've gone full Leo, but it was something that had you kind of adapt and, and be more Aquarian as a kid, which is to be sort of the funny friend of everyone mm -hmm. where, which I'm sure you did normally, but then it may also have become sort of a, a bit of an, a persona as well. Now at 18 and a half, that's when the North node comes back around, it takes 18 and a half years to make a full revolution through the Zodiac to come back where it was when you were born. So that's your first, what's called North node return. So you were in college and you were like, I'm ready to now come out from being like the funny friend of everyone and be fully seen. So, and then that happens again at like 36, yeah. 37. So, um, so isn't that funny? So, that yeah, that's. That's so pretty, good. that's, that's interesting. You know, this is, this is fascinating stuff. I have no, you know, no clue about well, this all this. Is what, for everyone yeah. to learn about themselves, even in your astrology retreats, Ophi, um, you know, you, the few that I've been on were all women. Um, but it was really good because we had every, you know, there's all these phases of women from the maiden to the crone. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and we had representation from each group at these retreats. And when you talk about your return, like the Saturn returns and the age that that happens and the really important life-changing things that happen between 28 and 32, you know, that first Saturn return. And we went around the group and it, who got divorced those years, who got married for the first time, who had the first child, right. who had, it's, it's always, that's why astrology is real because you can really look back at the blueprints of when it all came back around, like the, you know, then the nodes return. It makes such sense. So that's why astrology yeah. is just something more than fun. It's something that when you're aware of like your Saturn return coming up and shit's hitting the fan all over, you can really just stay a little bit more calm and understand what's happening and make rational choices and take the exactly. emotion out of it and be the observer of it all and the witness, be able to, you know, witness it all instead of freaking out and losing <laughs> your mind. You know what's happening. So these are the yeah. tools that I, I love, but I, I want you to answer the God question because I think oh, yes. we can't a lot of people step that one. give me a, mm -hmm. a hard time. 
Absolutely. I mean, well, you know, the Magi for your, you know, Italian Catholic friends, they followed three stars, right? To find Jesus. Um, so uh, human beings have looked to the sky since the beginning of civilization. That's how they, it was, it's our, the stars are our calendars, you know, without following the cycles of life and nature, we wouldn't be here today. So it's simply think of it as a tool. Um, and because we've developed all these modern tools, it seems strange that we would still follow these patterns, but it's actually strange that we're not to me because it's our first clock. So, but I, are you also kind of asking about free will, Derek? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not super religious, but I do believe in a higher power and I do pray mm -hmm. and I, you know, uh, yeah. you know, my mom's a devout Christian and my, both my parents mm -hmm. are. Um, yeah. And I went to I went to Christian school in Asbury Park, New Jersey, from kindergarten to fourth grade. Oh, I know Asbury Park. Yeah, and yeah. then, uh, but yeah, I so I just curious about that. Like, I don't go to church every Sunday, but I definitely believe. So I wonder, like, how that comes into play. Well, I I get this a lot, and I think yeah. I talked about it on the other podcast that I did, Latte Larry. It was kind of like a fun, lighthearted podcast that we did during the pandemic. And <laughs> a lot of people, because I love Mother Mary so much, and she's represented all over my house and my body with tattoos. Um, people are like, I don't understand you. Like, are you Catholic or are you a witch? Like, which one is it? <laughs> right. And like it has to be either or. <laughs> exactly. And a lot of people are struggling with their religion and saying, I want to get into things like astrology, but I've been told it's this, that, and the other thing. I want to go to a psychic. I've been told it's this, that, and the other thing. I think the more, um, the age that we're coming into now as a planet and everything is kind of revealing that all of these things um, that man created, you know, like Jesus was not a cat Christian. <laughs> he was a, he was a messenger of God, you know, Buddha right. wasn't a Buddhist. These are all things that man created. Um, and the underlining message of them all was the same and it's love and it's wisdom and it's, you know, serving and everything. So I think, What's happening now is a lot of these structured things are going to start breaking down and people are going to see what it's really all about. And astrology, like you said, was used. You taught me this. Doctors would use astrology back in the day, how to treat yeah. people. That's true. Um, yeah. That's so true. it was a very well-respected um, form of knowledge. And somewhere along the way, it was twisted into this woohoo you know, say satanic. Well, I'll tell you when it was, it was, when okay. the, um, I mean, literally in history. So it was actually until the middle ages, there were astrology chairs and the greatest universities and the popes had astrologers, but um, there was a Pope. I, uh, and I thought I'd have to tell you which one, but you know, as a, as a, as a recovering Jew, I'm not up on my Pope <laughs> as much as I should. <laughs> but um <laughs> the church wanted more control and, uh, you know, Galileo and Copernicus, they followed astrology as well. Galileo actually had to renounce his astrology or risk death. Um, and then along with that, so the church first renounced astrology and then the age of enlightenment and reason and intellect came in response to the church. So the church was then seen as controlling and superstitious. And then the, the rational intellectuals were like, we renounce all of that. And they lumped astrology and the church in one big bucket. So, um, so since, so for about 500 years, we've been getting away from it, but up until then, I mean, you know, the Greeks use it, Stone, Stonehenge, the ancient Sumerians were the first, the Babylonians, what would be modern day Iraq is where, you know, the very first astrology, uh, the foundation of it is. So it's thousands of years old, the Egyptians and, um, you know, what we know as religion and what Dina was saying and God are two different things. We're all God or instruments of God. If we open ourselves and attend this again, a the proper high vibe, pure intention, use of anything, astrology, whatever you want to call it is to clear away interference. You can tune into the, to the signals from the universe, God, whatever you want to call it and mm -hmm. hear what rings as truth. I, that's how I see God is the, the thing that you know is true in you and your whole body and being feels it. And 
that's the voice of God to me. So when we're, when, when, when we stop arguing with who we are, which causes suffering, uh, we can hear that. And what you're, the work you're doing, Dina, is like to, is really to help people clear. We want, we want to actually remove, not add, you know, remove. Well, the block. Exactly. We're going back to what people use eons ago, mm-hmm. um, tools like astrology, plant medicine, all of these things that at some point in the way, um, mankind wanted control and yeah. kind of hung all the witches, like we right. said. Yeah. So if you're yeah. using these things to mm-hmm. harm another person, control them in the three-dimensional everyday world, you're using it to get farther away from God and the God within yourself. If you're using it to stop suffering from trying to control something that you can't, namely anything outside of yourself, then then you're, you know, there's no God in that astrology. Does that answer exactly. kind of the question, Derek? Yeah, there's a, there's... I, it, it makes sense. I mean, it does make sense. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously there's questions in there and there's interesting things you said, and it's a lot to take in, but yeah, I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> and there's, there's with anything, there's a high vibe and a low vibe with every sign. There's a high vibe and a low vibe. Yeah, if like you're, so if you know, if you're working on your highest vibe as a Pisces, you're using your sensitivities for good. If you're working on mm. a low vibe, you're poor me victim. Um, and you're using those. Oh, see, I'm never that. <laughs> I'm never that. Well, that's probably aren't actually. <laughs> I could yeah. be like in the in a bad mood or whatever, but I'm always like positive forward motion. Like instead of looking yeah. to like mm-hmm. alcohol or something like that, I'll get creative to keep my mind busy or do something or, or produce something or or uh, write well, see, something. That, that's that's more Leo. Um, whereas Pisces, yeah. we Pisces have a tendency to, for addiction because we're in this like dream world and we want, kind of want to stay there in this 3D life. Thank God I don't like alcohol. And <laughs> I also think Pisces are are like super empaths and mm-hmm. they're self-medicating kind of. They, they're overwhelmed by taking in too many people's feelings with no boundaries. So exactly. they're medicating because they're. But that's they're, when you're working on the low vibration of Pisces, yeah, which exactly. I've, I've been there. I've been there. And I, you know, a lot of self-help and work on myself. What is that? Um, I feel like I'm vibrating on the higher vibe of Pisces these days and using, yeah, you are. um, you know, those sensitivities and everything else that comes along with it for good. Um, yeah. but it's, it's that religion has that every, everything and ourselves as individuals and humans in this body suit have it as well. So I think the yeah. goal is to use these tools to vibrate on the highest levels of yeah. all of the things we're talking about. And it looks like Derek has a Taurus moon. So that's your inner you. I can tell because of the day you're born. And Taurus is very practical, very pull up the bootstraps, get busy, get to yeah. it. So how you deal with feeling out of control is to be creative and industrious and productive and to make something, to build something, to channel it. And so luckily you have a chart that's very much wired for that can do energy. Well, this is what I love about all the topics we're going to, cover on Dina does because I've it's turning 50. Um, and I guess this is going to air We're we're, we're going to get a little bit into what you guys want to know about what's happening in the stars right now, but we're just so you know, we're recording this, um, very late February and I'm about to go on my big 50th birthday trip and turning the big five Oh. And, um, it's the sad to me that was been my life's journey has been like learning about all of this stuff, metaphysical and beyond. And things are clicking very quickly now. And I don't think it's because um, specifically what I've been doing. I think it's what's happening uh, collectively in the universe right now and in the stars. Things are just moving quickly. So you're going to find that um, even though this might be the beginning of your path to um, whatever you want to call it, spirituality, finding yourself or whatever, things are going to really happen fast. They're going to happen right away. Um, I started this kind of journey at 25 so don't be nervous. It's not going to take you 25 years to, to get. <laughs> no, there's the enough technology for that now. Yes. Um, but even just the energies, time is going faster. You'll see that things are going to happen really, really fast. And I, I want to touch on a little bit about March and all the planets are going forward 
um, yeah, this month. No retrogrades. Yeah, which is super important because retrogrades, I mean, everyone knows the Mercury retrograde and everyone says it and they say it sometimes when they don't even know what that means, but it's real. Most um, people. And, yeah. <laughs> and you're right. The Venus retrogrades. I'll always, when I'm, whenever I'm like thinking about getting a procedure done or something, I'll text Sophie and say, yeah, "What's no. Venus in retrograde?" Because <laughs> you don't want nothing. Get, oh, Botox, no changing your hair, <laughs> no, nothing. Um, but those are really totally. important. So March is a, a month where it's kind of beautiful that everything is moving forward. So again, this is a time to put things into play because action is going to happen. Uh, mm-hmm. Manifesting is going to happen really quickly. Um, so to be tapped into that and to really, whether it means organizing your business a little bit better or hiring or firing or, or getting, just get ready because March is a month. This is probably going to air mid-March, but especially the second half of March, from what I understand, things yeah. are going to happen really quickly. So explain that to us a little bit more. Yeah. So have you ever been in a car and you've passed another car and it feels like you're going backwards, like the optical illusion? That's what a retrograde is. It's a planet is passing the earth and its trip around the sun. So we're getting that weird illusion of backwardness. Hmm. And um, yeah, it's it's really astronomical uh, mechanics. So it looks like that planet's backwards. So we measure the view of it. And so everything that planet rules appears to be going quote unquote backwards and haywire. So um, when, when we have this rare time that there's no retrograde planets, it's like all systems go. However, there are some benefits to retrogrades. They kind of uh, slow us down and make us a little more thoughtful. I mean, we have no retrogrades now and like World War III is starting. So <laughs> it's almost like we could, we could stand for someone to stop and think or have an obstacle too. So, I mean, that's, that's actually related to other things happening in the USA's chart, but um, for on an individual and personal level, no retrogrades. Yeah. It's like, you don't have to second guess yourself or wait as much. It's very much a time to sort of trust the answers that you get and your intuition and to take action on them without waiting. So in late April, Pluto goes retrograde. So March and April do the thing launch the podcast, you know, exactly. And I I love when like intuitively, that's when I was feeling it should happen because, you know, I turned 50 and everything, but that's when, you know, you're like in the flow, you know, exactly. And, you know, you know, for you turning 50 or for all of our Gen X early 1970s born, because I know you probably have a lot of fans who are our age. We're in a period called the Chiron return. Chiron is spiritual healer. It's an asteroid. And so at about 50, uh, you go through this. I call it the fuck it phase because it's like, really? <laughs> you're like, I don't know, I like to swear on this. Um, oh, yeah, you're allowed to swear on this. <laughs> okay, good. Courage yeah. too. Um, yeah, so it's like a lot of people will leave jobs or marriages or structures of their life to find their truth and, and do their healing work in the world. So, or they'll open up to things that they were afraid to try that get them deeper into themselves. So this is an ideal time for you to launch this. Yeah. And I will, again, in other episodes cover what has really put a fast forward on my individual healing and understanding self-awareness of all of that. It's happened so quickly in this past 12 months. I mean, all the work that I've done all these years, it's literally like all the magic is happening now for this time. Mm -hmm. So I hate when people are down on themselves because they're turning 50 and struggling with the youth of it all. It's like, you're really stepping into your wisdom and your power and your healing. And, um, you know, I think we, Maya and I were talking about like, we're obviously structuring social media a little bit better to gear towards this, um, podcast and what we want to cover. And, you know, the four different, um, um, there's seven archetypes really, but the four different phases of a woman going from maiden to crone, like you said, and right now we're in like this intantris healing phase. We're really coming into our wisdom and healing our own wounds so we can help others heal theirs. And it feels fucking amazing. It feels so good. So like like freeing, right? It does. It does. And I'm not scared to turn 50. I'm not scared to tell people I turn 50. I don't really give a shit. Like you said, fuck it. Because um, like it's liberating in a way. And it's, you know, people are either, like you said, changing, getting out of rounds or you're stepping shit up. Like Dave and I are really stepping shit up as a couple together. And it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's great. 
it's it hurts at times, but it's like we're in this together. And I love that yeah. he can be a little younger than me. That's what I mean by like time is things are happening faster because a normal man of 42 may not be ready to do this kind of work, but the stars are not giving us a choice. And speaking of all these life passages that you're mentioning, both Derek and Dave are in another crucial like early 40s one called the Uranus opposition. This is when the Kundalini energy rises. Uh, So it comes from the base of, you know, or from the earth all the way up your chakras. So supposedly what happens, and you're in this, Derek, is for men, it activates their hearts and women, it activates their throats. So many women have thyroid issues in their early forties and they start, so men start to open up their hearts and maybe become more (laughs) in tune with feminine energy, which is interesting that you would, you would attract a Gemini with a Leo South node during that time, Derek, because, you know, she is definitely there, whether she's a mirror or a messenger, she's there to get you in touch with your heart and feelings and how important love and connection really is to you. And maybe you learned about it by the absence of that in a healthy way. And so for women, we learn to start speaking what we want, uh, voicing our autonomy and our authentic feelings after a year, like a lifetime of being trained to please others. So men give up the, I must be the strong provider suppressing my feelings and women give up the, I got to say what people want to hear. So they like me and I belong. And I don't care what your gender identity is. We are trained and conditioned this way, no matter what. So oh, what yeah. I love about Ophi um, is you can go to astrostyle.com, put in your email so you can get notifications for when you're doing lives and stuff. Because the best thing about you as an astrologer is how intuitive you are, how fucking smart you are, Ophi. Because <laughs> like nerd. me, you have dived into probably much more than I have courses, classes, modalities of just learning, um, just so you can put it towards um, you know astrology and how it plays a part. But, you know, we're talking about relationships. Look at the advice that you're giving. You're intuitive to it. You're knowledgeable in it. And I mean, to me, you're just the shit. So, (laughs) and the feeling is so mutual. So (laughs) it's so good to have friends who, you know, compliment with an E and an I, you, right? Mm -hmm. So, (laughs) well, we're so thankful for your knowledge. And I am definitely going to, um, try to peek into your schedule here and there to have you on the podcast, just to talk about current events, um, questions. We'll take maybe some questions from our listeners. Um, that's fun. Let's do uh, that. And just cover, you know, basic things. And then maybe once in a while we'll do fun little reading where we can, um, take some emails and do specific readings to some winners or whatever. And they get the lucky. Love it. Read down for whatever. Bring on the cosmic fun. The All right. So fun. astrostyle.com, put in your natal chart, go and do um, all the fun things, the courses, the new membership. I and know. we can't wait to have you on again. I can't wait to be on again. Thank you so much. So right. fun.